Hi everybody. It's time to answer another Bible question. Today's question is this. How did God make Adam and Eve? Thank you for that question. That's one that a lot of people are curious about and a lot of people have argued about. We're going to first start by looking to the Bible like we always do. And today we're going to start with Genesis chapter 2. Let me read some verses to you about what it says about how God made Adam and Eve. Now after God had made all the animals and plants, it said he looked around, and then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living creature. And the Lord planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man that he had formed. And the Lord took the man and put him in the garden to work and keep it. About that it says God made Adam out of dust and clay and then he picked up that little clay person he made and blew into his mouth the breath of life. What about Eve? Well, if we keep reading, we can find out about Eve. It says this, then the Lord God said, It's not good for the man to be alone. I'll make a helper that's fit for him. Now out of the ground the Lord had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever he called the every living creature, then that was its name. And the man gave names to all the livestock and the birds and the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam... There was not found a helper that was fit for him. So the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed up the place with flesh, and the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. And then the man said, Ah, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called a woman, because she was taken out of man. Those are pretty interesting stories, aren't they? That the man was made out of dust, and God breathed into his mouth. And in order to make the first woman, says God made Adam go to sleep, and he plucked out one of his ribs and turned that into a woman. A woman that Adam found very attractive and a good mate and partner for him. That's what the Bible says. But wait a minute, you might say. You know, Pastor Greg, what about other things that we know from science and uh, history? When we look at the archaeological record and bones that we find from creatures that existed long ago, what do we make about that? That's a really good question and an important one. See, I think everything we can know about this world and find out about it will be consistent with what God tells us in his scriptures. Now, it's quite likely that the way humans got here is the way many other, all other animals got here. We grew out of the good creation that God made over many, many, many years and in different shapes and sizes until God hold forth us humans to be just like he wanted us to be. Well, how can that be? Don't those stories compete with each other and contradict each other? Well, yes, and they're different stories, but sometimes different stories can help us see different truths about something. Let me give you an example. Now, suppose that you come home one day from school and you're tired, and it's been tough. You've had a lot of work to do, and you had a little argument with one of your friends. But when you come into the home, something smells good. Your mom has made cookies for you. And you sit down at the kitchen table with a big glass of milk, and you enjoy some cookies. Now, just about that time, your little brother comes in. And he says, hey, where did you get those cookies? Now, there's different ways you could answer that question, aren't there? You could say this. Well, 
First of all, you have to have butter and salt and chocolate chips and baking soda and sugar and some eggs and just a touch of vanilla. And then you have to heat the oven to about 375 degrees. And when it starts to warm up, the butter melts inside that batter and the cookies start to spread out and make a flat disc. But when it gets to exactly 112 degrees at where we are, uh, then the water will turn to steam and it makes a cookie puff up. And then the baking soda breaks down into carbon dioxide and it makes it rise up more and when it's almost done then all those clear odorless sugar crystals they break down into this runny brown gooey liquid that makes it smell really good and it's not just the sugar al alone but the sugar interacts with the proteins and the egg and the flour resulting in what's known as the Maillard reaction which accounts for the yummy taste. Now of course you could use baking powder if you wanted a little more carbon dioxide in a fluffier cookie. Well, you could say that, couldn't you? And it would be true. But you could also say this. Well, mom knows that Wednesdays are my hardest days at school. And she also knows I love chocolate chip cookies. Because she loves me, she made some cookies for me when I came home. Now let me ask you, which of those two stories is true. Both of them are, aren't they? One describes how the cookies came about, what kind of chemical reactions were going on, and what type of ingredients were necessary for it to work. The other story tells more of a personal story about relationships and what really matters. The thing we can learn from Scripture are some of the truths that matter most. Maybe not exactly how it is that our bodies became to look just like they are over the millions of years. But something more important, and that's that God loves us and made us to be just like he wants us to be. All right, thanks for watching. Hope to talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.